so now we are going to talk about the stability of the sacroiliac joint the stability of the sacroiliac joint is achieved by two reasons one is foam closure and other is force closure so what is foam closure foam closure foam closure is achieved by the joint structure that is anatomy of the joint joint surface and the ligaments which is surrounding the joints so this is achieved by this a type of closure is called as foam closure and which is otherwise called as a, a passive stability so passive stability of the joint is provided by the foam closure clear and second is force closure what is force closure the force closure is provided by the muscles clear so the muscles we as we already discussed <coughs> rectus uh, abdominis erector spinae and even a, a biceps femoris biceps femoris muscle so these muscles are the core muscles or the uh, the muscles which is surrounding the uh, abdomen clear and there are other muscles core muscles like uh, pelvic floor muscles diaphragm muscles uh, uh, rectus uh, uh, multifidus muscles these are the muscles which are present deep to the uh, abdomen clear they are called core muscles so these muscles they contract simultaneously and they help to stable and helps in keeping the sacroiliac joint stable clear so what is the uh, lock, uh, close pack position i have told the close pack position of the uh, sacroiliac joint is nutation so this nutation is achieved by the active contractions of the muscles so the muscles they contract and they lock the joint and they stabilize the joint right during activities activities like uh, uh, sitting or uh, lifting the weight heavy weight and running clear so during this moment what happens the active muscle contraction is required and it helps to keeps the joint locked and keep the joint stable so this stability is called as a force closure clear the muscles are actively contracting and they are closing the joint so the joint pelvic sacroiliac joint is stabilized one is by the ligaments and joint itself surface itself which is called foam closure and stability is provided by foam closure and second is it is provided by the contraction of the muscle that is force closure right suppose if there is a patient if the patient is having any uh, sacroiliac joint dysfunction clear either it may be so you should know how to uh, uh, diagnose whether the, the instability is because of foam closure foam closure dysfunction or the uh, uh, problem is due to force closure dysfunction suppose if the pelvic is not stable there are two reasons clear one is either it may be a because of the foam closure dysfunction or it may be due to force closure dysfunction so in order to treat the patient first you should identify what is the problem the pelvic instability what is the cause of the pelvic instability the pelvic instability is because of foam closure dysfunction or it, it is because of force closure dysfunction so now if you can how you will identify the pelvic instability is because of foam closure uh, dysfunction or force closure dysfunction so i'll ask the patient to lift the right leg slr so now you can see the pelvis is stable so there is no uh, torsion in the right or left side of the pelvis so put i put it down so now i am asking the patient to lift the left leg so now if you see the right side pelvis is going up the right asis is slightly rotating towards left yes so this shows that there is a pelvic instability on the left side so now i will ask the patient to lift the left slr and i'll give the resistance i'll ask the patient to flex and rotate the trunk towards this side and i'll give resistance yes again do it again do it lift it so if you see now the pelvis is stable so now what i am going to do is i am going to stabilize the pelvis and i am asking i'm going to ask the patient to lift the left leg again yes so in this situation if you see even after the stabilization the pelvis is not stable even after giving passive stabilization the step the, the pelvis is not stable and it is rotating to the opposite side 
while the patient is lifting SLR. So this confirms the patient is not having foam closure uh, disability or the foam closure dysfunction and he is having the force closure dysfunction. So how this force closure actually works? See, you know the latissimus dorsi muscle is in this direction, it is running in this direction and the gluteus muscle, gluteus maximus muscle is running in this direction. When the patient is doing SLR, what is happening? The gluteus maximus muscle is contracting and when the patient is doing the, when the patient is doing extension, clear? So what happens? The latissimus dorsi muscle and the gluteus muscle, they contract and you know the latissimus dorsi and gluteus muscle, it is having an attachment with the thoracolumbar fascia. When these two muscles are contracting, the thoracolumbar fascia, it gets tightens or uh, it stretches. When the thoracolumbar fascia above the sacroiliac joint, when it stretches, it provides the stability to the sacroiliac joint. So when the muscle is contracting, it is called as a force closure, clear? The, the force closure is provided by the muscles. The foam closure is provided by the ligaments and the joint surfaces. So, when the muscle is contracting, the thoracolumbar fascia is stretching and provides the active stability to the sacroiliac joint and it prevents the dysfunction of the sacroiliac joint. The same foam closure and force closure test can be performed in prone laying also. So, in this position, first I will ask the patient to lift the right leg. Yes, down, again, again. So, if you see the pelvis is stable in this position. Now, you lift other leg, that is left leg. So, now if you see the pelvis is rotating, right? So, which confirms this that the patient is having a some disability in the, sorry, some dysfunction in the uh, uh, sacroiliac joint. So, now I am going to ask the patient to do the extension movement of the opposite extremity and I am going to give resistance, clear? I will ask the patient to lift the left SLR. So previously what happens while patient is performing left SLR, again you do it. When patient is doing left SLR, the, the pelvis is tilted to the opposite direction, clear? And in second case, when I am giving resistance to the, I will ask the patient to go for extension of the shoulder and I am giving resistance to the shoulder, this movement, extension movement. So now you lift your uh, limb. So if you see now, the pelvis is quite stable. So why the pelvis is stable? Because when I am giving resistance to the upper extremity, the latissimus dorsi muscle contracts and when patient is doing the extension movement, the quadriceps, sorry, the gluteus maximus muscle is contracting. When the both muscles are contracting simultaneously, it creates a stretch in the thoracolumbar fascia and this stretch helps the sacroiliac joint to keep stable. So that is why when I am giving the resistance, before resistance the pelvis is rotating and after resistance the pelvis does not rotate. So this confirms the patient is having force closure dysfunction and how you will confirm again? So you, you now you uh, give the stabilization to the pelvis. So in this situation, when you give when you give passive stability to stabilization to the pelvis, and when you ask the patient to go for SLR, still the patient will have dysfunction. That is, the patient will have rotation of the pelvis. Do it. See now, if you see the pelvis is rotating. So even after giving passive stabilization, the pelvis is rotating. But when you give resistance to the extremity, then the, the uh, pelvis is stable, which confirms the patient is not having foam closure dysfunction and he is having force closure dysfunction.